Columbia Morning on KFRU. I've said uh, leading up to this yesterday in my promo and then earlier today, we're going to talk about vaping e-cigarettes. And this is a topic that I think is very important right now. And uh, my my guest is a doctor, a pulmonologist at MU Healthcare. I got your last name, sir. I'm uh, Armin. Armin, that's right. Armin. Kervavik. Kervavik, yep. It's nice to meet you. Mm-hmm. So Likewise, David. Y- you work with adults as a pulmonologist. What's a pulmonologist do? Um, generally treat lung diseases, uh, particularly COPD and asthma. Um, but we deal with a lot of other things, uh, including um, interstitial lung diseases like fibrosis of the lung and other things. So when you, when did you first start to maybe see cases or hear people coming to the hospital maybe with vaping or e-cigarette situations. So you know, I think this particular epidemic really didn't start up until a few months ago, and then we started soon seeing through cases. In the literature, um, there are cases dating back to 2015. Uh, I can't ever remember when e-cigarettes and vaping was introduced. It, in that the, had to be very early. Yeah, in the U.S., that was back in 2006. And initially, the introduction was just for uh, to help. It was a clean form of nicotine to help smokers quit. Um, I think that's obviously developed into a lot more since then. So what's been the problem? Because if it was in 2006 when it was brought to this country, I agree with you. I, th- I thought the early stories mm-hmm. were this is going to be a way where it will cut down, uh, help people stop the smoking habit, and it would be better for those of us who might be um, might be exposed to secondhand smoke. Hey, David, I think it's just kind of like uh, similar to cigarettes. When we first um, saw cigarettes, there weren't really the, uh, the there wasn't the awareness of um, of all the hazards um, to health associated with cigarette smoke. Um, vaping initially was um, just nicotine replacement with uh, water water va- uh, vapors, um, but over the over the last few years, as teens in particular have become um, uh, more enthralled with this uh, this idea of small um, sort of an electronic device that helps you um, vape and have a lot of different flavors and modifications, uh, particularly the the newer the newer types and with over five hundred types now. There's been a lot of um, uh, modifications, um, mm-hmm. addition of different substances, manipulation of the uh, device. Um, and these are probably the things that have um, caused us to see the uh, acute epidemic uh, over the last few months. I'll ask a basic question. Is vaping and smoking an e-cigarette the same thing? It is. So um, vaping and e-cigarettes, um, juuling, um, there's a lot of different Any other terms. terminologies, yeah. I mean, that people might hear, because I think that parents who are listening right now, I asked my daughter, and she's in high school, I said, is vaping something that is you you find at the high school? She said, oh, yeah, uh, really pr- uh, prevalent there, which surprised me that it, it may be as widespread and used as it is. So what, do, what are you hearing now as a physician? What are the concerns? What's happening? I mean, we hear of deaths. <laughs> we hear of of hospitalizations because of people who have vaped? So we have in the United States alone over 500 reported cases of severe illness related to vaping over the last uh, last year alone. Um, and we have at least half a dozen deaths, if not more, uh, that have been confirmed that are related to vaping. The disease ranges from mild symptoms uh, of GI upset, um, some shortness of breath and other respiratory symptoms to uh, severe respiratory failure, um, meaning requiring mechanical ventilation and life support in the intensive care unit to, as I said, some fatalities, unfortunately. Is it because of some kind of foreign substance introduced to the vaping liquid, or is it a quick reaction to something that somebody is is uh, prone to um, maybe not be able to handle what they're getting through an e-cigarette? Here's the worst part. We actually don't know. I was afraid you were yeah. going to say that. But what we do know is that uh, most of the cases of severe illness um, are reported to have used um, uh, THC or cam- cannabinoid oils, um, uh, a derivative of, of sort of the psychoactive substance in marijuana. Um, and so mixing of those definitely increases the risk. There are, there are several cases that have not done that and still have ended up with severe illness. So what are experts saying, that if used correctly and not mm-hmm. using things that you shouldn't be using in your e-cigarettes, that it might be okay for adults to use to try to break a habit of smoking? So my advice would be at this point to not use e-cigarettes, vaping, or any type of uh, device um, uh, like this at all. Um, if you are already if you already chosen to do this, um, then definitely avoid using anything with um, THC or cannab- cannabinoid oil. Um, definitely avoid any modifications or buying these products um, off the street rather than in a um, um, manufacturer or, or, or something like that. So um, I think... I think the wise thing is what you just said. 
but especially young people should stay away from this. I, I, is it too early to have research <laughs> that would be showing what the dangers are to young people and to their lungs? Or do we have pretty good proof right now? You know, sadly, most of these cases are happening in uh, young adults, Mm -hmm. um, teenagers up to 35. And that's because they're the ones that are usually uh, mixing and modifying the the products. Uh, The real scary thing is that as far as future implications, how this is going to affect kids in 10 years, 20 years, we have no idea. Um, The sort of, you know, the the medical societies have been warning uh, about the dangers of... um, uh, e-cigarettes and the the particular lack of knowledge for several years now, um, and I think unfortunately we have not been vocal enough. Have you? Um, again, this is a general question, not a specific question, but you see adults who suffer from some sort of lung disease. Do you at some time say, "Well, you might try an e-cigarette," uh, or you uh, you know somebody who has, and it seems to be at least helping them not continue down the path of, of excessive smoking. I'm, it's very hard for me. I told you before we went on the air, my dad died from smoking at COPD and emphysema. And, and it was, it's a horrible, horrible thing to experience with a, with a person that you're close to. But do you say, well, maybe you could go this direction instead? Yeah. You know, I, cigarette smoking is obviously just as bad. There can be acute reactions, even the cigarettes that are very similar to what we see with vaping. Um, that and lead up to acute respiratory failure and, and potentially um, can be terminal. Um, however, um, we have really good FDA-approved medications um, and other uh, uh, forms of nicotine replacement that I would probably recommend first. Mm-hmm. If somebody are, is already smoking an e-cigarette um, in an attempt to quit smoking, um, I, I don't know that they need to stop that, particularly if they've been doing it for a while, but I would recommend that they use a only nicotine um, and a very simple device. Do not modify the device at all again. Do not add any THC or try to mess with it uh, other than what the manufacturer recommended. I'm going to summarize what you've said because I think you're two, a couple of really clear points that people should hear is one of keep them away from kids in any kind of fashion. You, and would that be up to 21 in your advice or 25 or 18? What, what, really, where do you draw the really, line on that? I'm, really, I would keep them away from anybody. Yeah, right? I, I would too. <laughs> um, but kids are, you know, and, and the danger isn't really at 25 and 21. It's our, it's our high school students and our middle school students where this is really prevalent. Um, and for them, again, it's the it's the idea of having it personalized and digital, which is, you know, the cell phone age. Everybody's got a smartphone. Um, for them, this is really enticing. Um, and so I really, you know, encourage parents to um, lead by example, speak with their children. This is happening at every school. Um, and they call it different names. They These devices are really small and uh, discreet. They look like little um, flash drives and... Uh, uh, they're really, really easy to hide. Somebody told me recently that uh, some of the um, like work, um, sweaters or sweatshirts or something, they have these little little things in here that you can, you, there are little pockets right at the end of the sleeve that you can put one of these in and then you can kind of put it up. It looks like a Secret Service agent talking on a wrist radio or something, but basically what they can do is sneak I, yeah. Do you call it a puff? I don't yeah. even know what you so, call it when you take a drag. So on the, one of these. the uh, one of the devices that it has, allows for a lot of personalization is the Jewel, mm-hmm. um, and I, I'm sure you've heard about that. Um, it doesn't actually create a lot of um, uh, smoke. Mm-hmm. It's and you know a lot of kids um, uh, and teenagers think that it's just um, uh, water vapor, but that is not true. Even those devices contain aerosols with heavy metals. Um, carrier substances that we have no idea what those what the implications of those are going to be it's a little bit rebellious you know it's one of those of things course. you say hey this is the new thing as you said i can tailor it to fit my taste there are all kinds of uh, flavors that you can put in here i might even be able to sneak in some some uh, some illegal things and and let me do that because i'm i'm rebelling against the adults and yeah. but it's dangerous i mean that's what you're saying don't do it absolutely mm. avoid it if you can make sure your kids are not doing it and if you've chosen to do it, please, again, avoid modifying and using THC oils. I think that's sort of been the, the, the spring for this epi- epidemic right now. Do you think anti-vaping campaigns are on the right track? I think they are. Actually, if you look at some polls recently, we see that the awareness uh, of the dangers of vaping across the country has been dramatically increased. Um, uh, the uh, multiple health agencies are taking uh, stands. The CDC is releasing statements as well as um, local um, 
um, and state uh, health agencies recommending against vaping. We are now required to re uh, report um, all vaping-related lung illnesses uh, to the state health department. You're not? Uh, we are. Oh, you are. We okay, are. Okay. We are not required to do that um, to help them investigate and try to figure out what really is the is the true cause. Right now, do you have a lot of uh, vaping illnesses? Um, so what we see is severe illness. Uh -huh. um, here we have had a couple cases in town, um, unfortunately. Um, I'm hoping we don't see any more. Yeah. Um, but I think the trend will continue. Um, to be honest with you. Well, thank you so much. Of Appreciate your uh, insights into this. Uh, he is uh, from uh, MU Healthcare Pulmonologist there, Dr. Armin Karvavik, has been our guest. Thank you. Thank you, David. This is KFRU.